you have a power pivot model and let's say it's much more complicated than this very simplistic model I've built off of the AdventureWorks database. Now you want to document it. Now the diagram view in Power Pivot is extremely useful. But what if you wanted something that looks more like a data dictionary, which captures all the dimensions, attributes, measures, and their description? Now if you notice, in Power Pivot you do have the facility to add a description to tables, columns, and measures. What if we could use this metadata to build ourselves a dictionary? Something which cataloged all of our dimensions, measures, and attributes, and their description in one spot. That's what I'll be showing you today. First, we'll be doing this for a tabular model hosted on an SSAS server. And next, we'll try the same for an Excel Power Pivot model. To compile our data dictionary, we'll be making use of DMVs, or Dynamic Management Views. These are query structures which expose the metadata about an analysis services instance. For example, this query here returns me the different cubes which exist in this instance in this database. So let's get started. I have my Power Pivot data model in Excel right now. So first thing I want to do is move this to an SSAS tabular instance. It's a pretty cool trick that in SSAS tabular you can actually restore a Power Pivot file. And there we go. From the DMV queries available to us, we're going to be using these four cubes, dimensions, measures, and hierarchies. I'll short circuit the process and I'll show you the finished product. So, this is what I have built in Power Pivot. So, these you can see are. Uh, queries into my SQL Server Analysis Server. Pretty simple. Uh, select cube name from system MD schema cubes. And similarly, I have, uh, so I get perspectives from MD schema cubes, dimensions from MD schema dimensions, measure from MD schema measures, and MD schema hierarchies gives me the attributes. Then I do some cleanup uh, by creating some formulas, uh, calculated columns, to figure out whether uh, the entity should be really visible or not. I create this copy-pasted table, visible, which I link everything to. And, and then I also create relationships to perspective. So in the end, my diagram kind of looks like this. I have my dimension, measure, and attribute and those are in turn linked to perspective so I can select a specific perspective and then I can select uh, to see only the visible items. From this structure we can attempt to build a pivot table which would show us our data dictionary. However, we are not quite there yet. So if I build a pivot in Excel showing the attributes, table, field, and description, what I realize is that when I try to filter it based on a specific perspective or uh, whether the attribute is visible or not, I don't get any results. There's no filtering happening right now. And that's because I need a measure to enforce the filter. So I'm going to go ahead and add that measure. So in Power Pivot, I add these count measures. So dimension count, measure count, attribute count. They're pretty simple the simple row count. So now I now that I have those measures in place, I uh, add them in my pivot table and I build pivot tables for um, attributes, measures, and dimensions as well. And now you can see that uh, all of these are going to respond to the filters. So, uh, so based on which perspective I choose, I'm going to get different results. 
which is great. But this measure, this count is it looks a little kludgy. And of course, I can simply hide this column, but with Power Pivot, I'm sh pretty sure there's a better way to do it. So what we do next is in our model, we define these description uh, measures, and these are measures which actually return a string. And that works as long as you only return one value. And that's very feasible using this function first non blank. So you can follow the logic in there, but essentially I define it for um, all of them the dimension, measure, uh, and attribute. And now I can use that and let's see how the final product looks like. So now the dis description is actually a measure. You can see it sits here in the values, but it's returning a string. And now the result looks much cleaner and, of course, responds to uh, my filters as well. Of course, this is still a little kludgy. Instead of showing the dimensions, measures, and attributes separately, we would like to show them all together as part of a single uh, pivot. Uh, however, that's a little tricky. Um, essentially, for that, you need to union all these different tables, and I couldn't quite figure out how to do that uh, with a DMV query. However, you can uh, transfer these tables instead of transferring them to Power Pivot. You can transfer them to an uh, to a SQL server, and then it's a pretty simple join, uh, a SQL join to combine all these together. So I'll show you how it looks like for one of our production systems, and you can see we have different perspectives the users can select and different tables and as they expand uh, they get information uh, in right in one pivot about tables attributes measures and everything else so right now i'm executing these queries against an ssas tabular server which is hosting my model but what if i did not have access to an ssas tabular server what if i wanted to connect directly to my excel power pivot file So I, ha I have the queries that I want to use, but how can I execute these queries against an Excel Power Pivot file? You can do that using an add-in, Excel add-in called DAX Studio. You can download that from this site on CodePlex. And thanks certainly goes to all the people who have worked on this project. Let's see how you can use the add-in once you have it installed. So here's my Excel file, which has the Power Pivot model within, within the file. And once you have DAX Studio installed, it's going to show up under Add-ins. And I'm going to click to open it. So first, we're going to change uh, the perspective of the model and then we're going to change the output to new sheet and now we can run the same queries we were using earlier but directly against an SSAS server and execute them here so I'm going to run my first query which is to get the cubes or the perspectives and you can see it sends the results to Excel and then the next query which gives me all the dimensions and then the measures and finally, the hierarchies, which gives me the attributes. And if I go back to my Excel file, I have the perspective, the cubes query, uh, the dimensions, measures, and hierarchy. So all you have to do is add these as link table to Excel and build the model similar to how we had built um, when we had queried SSAS, but you'll achieve the same results. Of course, when you're connected to SSAS, re refreshing that is very simple. You just go to Power Pivot and refresh, whereas here, when connecting to an Excel Power Pivot model, you would have to launch DAX Studio again, run all these queries again, and then update the data.